Hi there, my name is Marinko Spasovic and in this video I will talk about improving the way we handle the error path in our web API application and how to use discriminated unions to achieve that goal. There are more and more talks about introducing discriminated unions in C-sharp as a default feature and you can read more about that here. So having that in mind, this should be a perfect time to talk about discriminated unions because for me, using discriminated unions is the best way to handle the error path in our APIs or .NET apps overall. As usual, if you liked the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports this channel as well. That said, let's see how to implement this feature with an example. So I have prepared the project using the onion architecture. And here, the most important part, at least for this video, is the service layer. So let's expand it and open the service class. Here you can see a few public methods for fetching all the companies and a single company and also for creating and updating the company. Additionally, both the getCompany and the updateCompany methods call the private check method, which simply fetches the company from the database and if it doesn't exist, throws a custom created exception or returns the company result. The exception is handled inside the main project using the exception handler class. Here, I use the problem detail service as well to return a properly formatted response to the user. By the way, this is also the architecture I use in our newest Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API course, and you can find our courses page linked in the description below. You can check the Web API course if you want to master all the best practices to create powerful production ready Web APIs. But also, you can find Blazor, Microservices, and some other courses will be published soon. Again, the link will be in the description below. So, I have a working app, and I can run it, and use Postman to fetch all the companies. A single company, or get the proper result if a company doesn't exist. But now, let's see how we can improve the code. Discriminated unions are not a new concept. It has been in functional programming languages such as Haskell and F# -sharp for quite some time, but has been missing in C#. -sharp. The fundamental concept behind discriminated unions is ensuring compile time assurance that a method can yield several distinct types within a defined set. When we work with discriminated unions, the compiler knows exactly which types are valid in a given context reducing runtime errors. Also, this allows us to clearly model complex domains where a value can be one of several well-defined types. This makes our code more expressive and easier to understand. So, let's see how we can implement that. The first thing I will do is install the package in the domain layer that will help me implement discriminated unions. The name of the package is one off. And I will provide the version here as well. Ok, after the installation is done, let's create the necessary types we will use in our code. Here I want to mention that I will create types only for the error path or unhappy path of the code. The happy path will use existing types that I already have in my code. That said, in the domain project, let's create a new responses folder and inside the first type named API not found response. This will be a base abstract class with a single string message property. And I need a constructor to set the value for the mentioned property. Because it is an abstract class, we all know that the child classes, the ones that will cover the not found flow, will have to inherit from this one. Let's also create one more base class named API bad request response and just paste the code here. Ok, with the base classes in place, we can continue with a specific class type named company not found response. This class will inherit from the previously created abstract class. And let's add the constructor here that accepts the ID parameter and sends a message to the base constructor. I'm not going to create any other class here, like for the bad request flow 
or any similar flow because I will not need it in the example. But the principle is the same. In my mentioned course, you can find a lot more details regarding this. Now, let's revisit the service class. If we inspect this private method, we can see that it will throw a company not found exception or return a company entity. However, the return type of the method is only task company, indicating there is only a happy path in this method, which is not entirely true. We can be more specific in that regard using the discriminated unions. So, let's modify the method. First, I will modify the return type of the method using the one off read only struct and provide two different results the existing company and a company not found response for the error path. I also have to modify this line where I throw an exception and return a new company not found response with the ID as an argument. That's all regarding this method. With one of type, we are very strict about our return types. And also, one of has nine overloads, so it means we can provide up to nine different types here. Okay, with this done, I can refactor the rest of the methods inside the class. I will not touch the get all companies async method because it only has a happy path. This is also one of the advantages of discriminated unions. The code will stay as is. But let's modify the get company async method. Now, this method also has to return one of company DTO, company not found response, which clearly states what result paths it supports. Inside the method, I will extract the result from the private method and then use the try pick t1 method to deconstruct each type into its variable. Don't get confused by the name of the method, it makes perfect sense. With one of each return type is assigned with index, the first one on the index 0, and so on. Well, the name of the method explains exactly that. Try to pick a generic t type parameter at the index 1. So, in this case, I'm trying to extract the error from the one of type. I always prefer defensive programming, so that's why I'm trying to extract the error response first. But you can always use try pick t0 method or any other try pick tn method where n is the index of the parameter you want to extract. It is important to add the error as the first parameter here and then the company, because I state that I want to extract the value from the parameter on index 1. So, if I can extract the error, I will return it. If not, it will be null, but company variable will be populated. As you can see, only one of the returned parameters will be populated. The rest of the code is the same. Of course, I have to modify the member inside the interface. Again, I will use the one of type, provide both parameters, and include the required namespace. That's all I need to do here, and I can return to the service class. If we check the create method, you will see it basically has only the happy path where I map the DTO to the entity, save it with the repository, map it back to a DTO object, and return it to the caller so I don't have to change anything here. If for some reason any exception occurs, my global handle will take care of it. So we are good here, but I can modify the update method. You see, it also calls the private method that returns one of two different types. So I have to cover that. Just here, in this update method, if everything is okay, I don't return anything. That's why task is here. Since the point of using discriminated unions is to be as descriptive as we can, I can handle this happy path as well. So again, I will use one off here, and for the happy path, I will use the success type, which exists inside the one off dot types namespace. The other type will be company not found response. Let's also sort this out for better readability. Additionally, I would like to mention that next to the success type, one of provides many other inbuilt types we can use. You can see them here. 
Now, I will change this to result and then add the same check with the try pick t1 method to extract either the error or the company result. If I get the error, I will return it. Otherwise, the rest of the actions will be executed and I will return a new success result. Awesome. This is all I need here. Of course, if I want, I can improve these checks in both methods by using the constructors to have something like this, instead of the code we already have. But this is out of the scope of this video. It is covered in my course though, if you want to check. Now, we must not forget the interface modification. As I did for the previous method, I will use one off first and provide both types here the success and the company not found response. Good. Finally, we are ready for the controller modifications, so let's open it. I'm sure you already know that each controller class inherits from the controller base class. But when I work with discriminated unions, I like to do something with that inheritance. I always create my base controller, so let's do exactly that. In the controllers folder, I will create a new class named API controller base. And this one will inherit from the controller base class. Now, I will create a method that will resolve the error response from the service layer. It will return an iAction result and I'll name it process error. This method can accept multiple parameters through the one off type. So in this case, I will provide both the API not found response and the API bad request response types. So both the base abstract types and I will name the parameter response. Inside the method, I'll create a title variable and assign a simple message here. Then I will switch through the value property of the parameter because I can have multiple values for it. And if it is the API not found response type, I want to return the not found result and inside generate the problem details object where I will set the title property, the detail property using the response dot st0 property dot message property, set the status property with the not found status code and finally set the type property with the type of the response. I can do the same for the API bad request response just by using a different ST1 property because this type is on the index one. With this done, I can return to my controller and replace the base class here first. Then I can modify the get company action. So first, Instead of the company variable, I will use the result variable that will hold one of two possible results. Then, instead of this return statement, I will use the match method and provide the type I want to return. And then, if the result is successful, I will simply call the OK method. But if it's not, I will call the process error method and pass the error as an argument. If you want, you can even simplify this match method as Visual Studio suggests. But I like to keep it as it was previously, so let's return this. In the same way, I can modify the put action. The same pattern is applied here. Awesome. Now let's test it. I can get all the companies as before. I can also fetch a single company, but I can handle the error path as well. The same applies to the update action. Excellent. You see how easy it is to improve the code base and be more declarative with our return types. Additionally, You've seen that the C-sharp pattern matching works great with discriminated unions, making it straightforward to process and deconstruct the types.
This is especially useful in complex workflows or decision trees. Also, discriminated unions make it easier to maintain and extend our code base. Adding a new type to the union requires updates only where necessary, and the compiler helps identify all affected areas. So, there are a lot of advantages. That said, if you liked the video and found it useful, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for new ones to come. Until then, all the best.